Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com here. It's Tuesday, the 7th of September, 2021, and you have tuned in to the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion. So good to have you. What are we going to talk about today? Well, we'll discuss Larry and the impacts to expect from it. Bermuda, obviously, going to be on the west side of the circulation of Larry, and they will feel some wind and some maybe some squalls there, certainly some high surf, maybe some beach erosion, that kind of thing. And, of course, 91L down in the Gulf of Mexico National Hurricane Center, increasing the odds of development just a little bit on that one. So we'll take a look at that and what to expect over the next few days. I know a lot of people are very much on edge, especially in the central Gulf Coast. Anything comes in there and it's going to be worrisome. going to try to tone that down a little bit, not get you all worked up over nothing. You know, hopefully this will be nothing, but... Hey, I understand how it is in the aftermath of these big hurricanes. Uh, you get kind of rattled, and any news of anything coming in there can be problematic. In the eastern Pacific, we have an invest area, 96E, I do believe is its designation, off the coast of Mexico, so we'll take a gander at that. <laughs> gander. Don't know where that word came from, but whatever. And then in the West Pac, been a long time since we've talked about western Pacific activity, and we do have a tropical storm and a typhoon out that way, and we'll take a look at those as well. So let's just start off with that from the Tropical Cyclone Guidance Project here from NCAR. Really neat web page. I've not used it in a while, so I'm circling back around and remembering all these different tools in the tool chest of what we can use to analyze what's going on out there. Um, so let's go back to current active storms. That's what I want. So there's Larry in the Atlantic. This is Invest Area 91L in the Gulf. This is another Invest Area 96E in the Eastern Pacific. This is the typhoon out there, Chantu. And then we have a tropical storm, Konson. Konson, something like that, over the Philippines area. So, you know, it's right up there in the uh, tropical regions of the planet. That makes sense. The tropical zones, there's your tropical cyclones. So let's take a look starting in the Atlantic here with Larry as of the 11 a.m. advisory package because there's no watches or warnings. We don't get intermediate advisories. Larry has weakened a little bit down to 115 miles per hour, still a major hurricane. Already has racked up over 21 ace points, if my calculations are correct. And uh, ace, of course, is the measurement of how much energy is expended from tropical cyclones. Here's 91L, 30% and 40% over the next five days. And if we look at this on the broader scale where this should track, not going to bring any appreciable impacts to the areas where Ida menaced, so no worries there, but it could turn towards the Northeast Gulf and bring some impacts over here. It's very storm surge prone, so if you get any onshore flow, if this develops into any kind of a low and you have that onshore flow, which in this case would be on the southeast side, because it's going to be moving from southwest to northeast, that right front quadrant, onshore flow, that's what could bring some storm surge and other impacts, high waves, that kind of thing. The threat of severe weather, heavy rainfall, those are all part of what make up tropical systems, even if they aren't named, and especially even if they aren't hurricanes. We get so fixated on naming everything and classifying it, and if it doesn't reach a certain threshold, people don't pay attention. I am going to do everything I can to change that mindset in as many people's minds as possible. Think about what it could do to you. Be selfish. Like I said in our previous update, one instance where being selfish will pay off. What's it going to do to me? Well, in this situation, that's what I want you to think. And then beyond that, your neighbors, your community, and so forth. All right, in the East Pacific, Mark, the tropical cyclone activist. All right, whatever. 90% chance that Invest Area um, 96E develops and should stay off the coast of Mexico, the Baja and vicinity, so no worries there for direct impacts. And then this, not even sure why it's there because it's not going to do anything. All right, uh, back over to this one real quick. Over here in the uh, Westpac, we do have these two different systems. I didn't pull up a satellite or a track map, my apologies, but the uh, tropical storm Conson is uh, bringing squally conditions, heavy rain, you know, tropical storm conditions to the Philippines. And then this next one, though, could track closer to 
uh, Taiwan. And in fact, what I'll do when we get to the GFS, we'll just swing over to that part of the world on the map extent that Dr. Cowan has on Tropical Tidbits, and I'll show you there. You know, we want to make sure we cover as much as we can, all right? Even if you need to tune out after the Atlantic part, that's fine. All right, so here's Larry on our interactive map, and, uh, you know, eventually we can uh, get Will Woodgate, our programmer, to start programming in all activity, so we would, we would capture what goes on over here. We do capture Eastern Pacific activity, but since we don't have a named system or a tropical cyclone yet, a depression or higher, uh, that's not showing up on the map. But maybe we can, I'm sure Will will see this, and he's going to be like, ugh, another, another menu item to add? But something to think about. Global tropical cyclone tracking? If it's easy to do, why not? Anyway, so Larry should pass well east of Bermuda. There is Bermuda. Bermuda is not one island, by the way. It's a uh, makeup of several islands out here in the Atlantic, and the core of Larry will pass, past, will pass comfortably east of Bermuda. I try to say so much in these updates, it's a wonder it even works at all. But yes, it should pass comfortably east of Bermuda, uh, but the circulation is large enough that you could get some uh, peripheral impacts. And uh, speaking of that, Let's go back to the Atlantic. I just want to show you something real quick. If we look at the public advisory, uh, there are different tools you can see about the wind speed, uh, the, um, the probabilities, the arrival times of tropical storm force winds, and so forth. But the easiest tool is right in here where it talks about uh, the wind part, the discussion and outlook. Uh, maximum sustained winds are near 150 miles per hour, gradual weakening, etc., Larry is a large hurricane. Hurricane force winds extend outward up to 70 miles from the center, and tropical storm force winds extend outward up to 185 miles. So it's just a matter of how close to does those uh, do those tropical storm force winds get to Bermuda. And we'll just wait and see when we do this tomorrow. We can get in here with the old measuring tool and kind of measure you know, right there. The track anyway today, 200 miles away. We'll see what it shows tomorrow. Pretty neat that our map does that, huh? Yeah. All right, looking at the satellite animation uh, of the Atlantic Basin, there's big old Larry out there. It's kind of become disheveled, maybe a little bit of shear, kind of shaking it up, some dry air maybe getting involved. you got to remember, we're not in a favorable Madden-Julian oscillation period right now. The Atlantic is in between these big upward motion phases, that's going to come into the picture in ah, five, ten days, something like that. And so the fact that we have Larry out there at all is pretty significant, uh, that it was able to develop and flourish kind of at the end of a favorable period. Now it's kind of left in between. And we saw that with Florence. Florence came roaring out of the gate back in 2018, became a Category 4, scared the heck out of everybody, my family, myself included, that we think oh, this could really wreck the place, and it did, floodwaters-wise, and some storm surge impacts, but it lost a lot of its fervor because the Madden-Julian oscillation kind of flipped. It became less favorable overall, and we're kind of seeing that with Larry now. These long-lasting hurricanes might come in at one phase and dilly-dally around as the phase changes over it. So there you go. Uh, in the Gulf, there's 91L. Another piece of energy coming off Africa. There's more energy sitting in here that is not very um, noticeable right now. It's not flaring up very much, but it is there. So there's a lot of energy out there that could, could potentially develop. Uh, just nothing looks prolific right now. But we'll watch 91L and see what it does over the next few days. Oh, and you can also see over on the western extent of the animation, there's 96E from the Eastern Pacific. Got a little thunderstorm outside the office today. I don't know if you can hear that thunder, but it's there. Uh, nice rainy day. I should have just gone back to bed. All right, so the GFS here. We'll look at the Western Atlantic, then we're going to swing over to the West Pack and show you the uh, those systems near the Philippines and Taiwan. This is from the 12Z GFS, uh, 850 millibar level of the atmosphere. Kind of my favorite level to just to see how things are going looking under the hood, so to speak, if the engine down low, 5,000 feet looks good, which this does not. This does. That's a very healthy cyclone. It's real easy 
to spot that. I think you could agree with that. So this is you know well developed. This is like no, not even close. So that's what we look for. Let's see if one starts to, if this starts to favor what uh, Larry looks like over time. And you know it doesn't. I'll spoil it for you. But a small circulation does develop, nevertheless, and it makes its way up in about 36 hours to uh, near Mexico Beach, Panama City, and vicinity. Uh, right there where Fred came in and Michael uh, three years ago almost. And then it moves across the I-10 corridor roughly out into the Atlantic as Larry goes by and kind of mills around. Now we're out at day five. So, you know, not much of it yet. We will see, you know, folks in this area keep an eye on it. Severe weather, heavy rain. Maybe it becomes a small, weak system with some wind impacts, but nothing indicating at all that you need to get too worried about this from major impacts. Low, maybe moderate impacts from rain, and that's about it. Then you see at day five, the Bay of Campeche starts to come to life. And just to stretch this out a little bit to, as to kind of what to look for down the road, maybe this tries to get going and move on up in towards South Texas, the Rio Grande Valley. So again, this is what we do here. We try to Look at the different things, see what makes sense, what doesn't, if it's a favorable phase, if it's unfavorable, if ensembles are showing it, whatever. And maybe beyond the five-day time frame, something to watch in the western Gulf of Mexico. We'll see. All right, we'll see. So just real quick, let me go over to a different region of the planet uh, to show you, first of all, East Pacific with Area 96E right there, well off the coast. This is five days out. Everything is going to... Uh, go to where I left it, if you will. So let's back this up to the current time. You see it forming there. Gets close to Cabo San Lucas in vicinity. And any wobble back to the east a little bit, yes, this could be a problem. That looks like it develops into a hurricane, a very well-developed system in the model field there. And then it goes up, dies off, and then fades away. So we'll have to see, again, any deviation to the east puts the Baja here in jeopardy of direct impacts. So we'll keep an eye on that for our friends over in that part of the world. Now, let's move over to the Western Pacific real quick. We'll back this up again to the current time frame, which is right there. So there's the tropical storm uh, that's currently impacting the Philippines. This is a huge map extent that Levi Cowan, Dr. Cowan, has set up. So the scale is not the same as what I just showed you off the East Pack. So these look small, and they are. They're not giant typhoons, but they are larger in real life than what this would kind of portend uh, or portray here. This Mercator projection, if you know your maps and how it can distort things, just keep in mind these are not tiny little cyclones in here. They're not giant either, but whatever. So that's the one currently impacting the Philippines. This is the next one, the typhoon, that is forecast, generally speaking, by the global models, etc., to make its way eventually towards Taiwan. You see the original one there, uh, currently Consor uh, going across the Philippines. And then the next one uh, moves up towards Taiwan. Yeah, maybe a direct landfall there after passing close to the northern tip of Luzon, if I know my geography over there properly. So something to monitor for interest over in that part of the world. All right, again, I mentioned this yesterday. I love the Storm 2K site going in and being able to just kind of see what everybody else is talking about. We call that the group chatter, especially in a place where people are civil and they know what they're talking about. This is just some uh, some different threads and posts. Uh, yesterday evening, the European Ensemble forecast, the EPS, the prediction system, starting to come to life in the main development region. All the different 51 members kind of picking up on development out there. Several of the members developing something in the Western Gulf. This is yesterday. It'll be interesting to see what today shows, right? And then you can also see, of course, Larry in there, a very tight guidance cluster, not impacting Bermuda, but maybe a scrape by Newfoundland. And then you can also see the guidance cluster associated with 91L. A few of the members try to develop that. Just a really easy way to just kind of browse through, see what people are saying. Some of it's just text and statistics. Sometimes they post links to stuff. And then you might get an animation like this of the German icon model. Again, just a really interesting way, 
that I have found over the years to just kind of read the tea leaves, uh, so to speak, the, these tea leaves being individuals that follow this stuff like you do. And they know things. They know about, like, sometimes the ECMWF has a bias uh, on certain tracks and developing cyclones over Africa. And that's what they're talking about in this post. And then this is uh, Luis. We know him as Cyclone Eye down in Puerto Rico talking about it as well. Uh, so just something interesting to watch. These maps, all kinds of maps available out there uh, showing the general ensemble prediction scheme or system, whatever. System. The ships is the scheme. Statistical Hurricane Intensity Prediction Scheme. Why do they call it a scheme, but whatever. Uh, the EPS is the Ensemble, ensemble Prediction System. I, I guess that would be the mean right through there that I'm trying to draw on. So yeah, you, know, you get an idea that over the next week to ten days, maybe five to ten days, things are going to start to get more busy. So we've got to really keep our eyes peeled and be ready for it in case something does come our way. All right? All right, and Storm 2K, by the way, is a free message board. Really nice. It's been around a long time. Good civil people, if you're ever interested in joining up. They are one of our partners and supporters on Patreon. Uh, full disclaimer there, as they say, and we appreciate that. But I'm also originally a Storm 2K member a long time ago. So check it out, storm2k.org. All right, where did my podcast go? Uh, Richard over in the UK was asking about it. I appreciate that, Richard. I know you weren't the only person listening. I started this up in um, May and had a good track record of just about every single morning, and then Ida came along and just derailed me. Uh, I can only do so much, you know, and that's, I'll just admit it. It, it. You know, I didn't have time to sit down and focus on putting together even a brief audio podcast during Ida. So I got to figure that part out, maybe have a substitute. And I know a few people uh, that I could ask that will do it for me when I'm out on field missions and we can still get this thing out there because it's important to give you something in the morning as to what we're looking at for the day ahead to kind of set it up and then do this video discussion here on YouTube in the afternoon. That's the rhythm that I want to get in. So this is going to start up again tomorrow, Wednesday, September 8th. In the morning you'll get up or whenever you listen to it, however you get your podcast, it'll be there for you. So I know some people appreciated it. It's not the most popular podcast, I know. I don't care. It's the effort that matters, and I'm all about putting in the effort. Just ask anybody that's worked with me in the field. Holy cow. Not lazy when it comes to the hurricane work, that is for sure. So I want to make sure I, I give this as much attention as I can, and then when we have an event that calls me away from it, we will have a substitute. We'll get somebody, maybe Mike Watkins, would be willing to do it. You remember him? He'd do a good job, and he knows how to do podcasts. So something to look forward to tomorrow, the resumption of Hurricane Season, the podcast. All right, let's get me back on here so I can say my goodbyes for now. That'll about do it from me for today. As always, thanks for tuning in. If you're new to the YouTube channel here, don't forget to subscribe to it. Hit the notification bell or button or whatever it is these days so you get notified. Right, You want to know when I post a video, especially when we go live with our live events. And um, like and share and all that good. You know what to do. It's social media. The more you share, the better we can do with this stuff. We can grow it and, and continue to expand our capabilities thanks to you. Have a great rest of your Tuesday. I am Mark Sutter for HurricaneTrack.com. I'll be back with more for you tomorrow.